Okay, so basically, my name's CJ, and today I'm going to tell you about one of the most life-changing and eye-opening experiences that I've ever had, which might not really sound like a huge deal to you, just depending on where you live, but I was raised in a small southern town my entire life. So it was the end of my 8th grade year, and I just changed schools to a place that I really loved. And so then my mom tells me that she is moving a very long distance, in case you haven't already come to that conclusion. <laughs> so like I mentioned, I lived in a tiny town my whole life and this always happens to me. But like I mentioned, I lived in a small, like tiny southern town my entire life that only had like 6,000 people in it. But, like imagine going from that, like literally nothing, living in the middle of nowhere to going to LA. But yeah, so she left and I was just kind of stuck living with my dad. And, well, not stuck, because I love my dad, obviously, but it was just really weird for me not to have her in my life. And so that summer, I flew out there, which was the first time I'd ever even stepped foot into an airport, and I was doing all of this by myself. I had connecting flights. It was terrifying, but I'm really proud that I made it through that, because I feel like that says a lot, like, for my ambitions. And so my dad took me to the airport, which is like three hours away from where we lived, and it was it was a really emotional thing just because like I wasn't used to being away or doing anything on my own. Like I was 13, I think. It was like whenever I was starting freshman year. And so I got on the plane and I made it through all these connecting flights, which, which honestly my airport experiences could be a completely different video, but it was terrifying. So I got on the plane and then I went to Chicago and they were having like a thunderstorm or something so my nerves were insane. Like I thought I was going to miss my flight. I had to like ride on a golf cart with some random person as they were like honking the horn at old people like just driving by and like not let me miss my flight. And so that connecting flight was in San Francisco and so I got on there. It was fairly easy. Like honestly I was so psyched out that it was scary but it's not really that bad. It's a stressful environment obviously. But I did it somehow. And so I went from there to Burbank. And that's where my mom was picking me up. And it was like... <laughs> it was one of those videos to where like if you haven't seen someone in a long time. And you're like running up and hugging them. And I was just so excited because like I was in California. That's something like I never thought I would be able to do. Just because like whenever you are raised in a small town. That's hard to get out of. Because you're just so conditioned to like the small town life whenever you get out like it overwhelms a lot of people and so they usually come back Jeez. and so I thought I was just going to be visiting her for a summer but long story long long story short I ended up staying with her for nine months a baby could have been born in that time and so obviously I had just gotten out of junior high like I had my eighth grade graduation and I wasn't really prepared to start high school in California where there's like 10 times more kids. Like there's four or 5,000, which I know if you're probably watching this, your high school could most likely be the same. But I was not used to that. Like there were tunnels in the school. And I just remember the first day I was all by myself. I was terrified. I didn't know anyone. Like the entire summer, the only person that I would even communicated with was my mom and her boyfriend that were actually in California and so I didn't like know the streets and I didn't know hardly anything I just done some touristy stuff and so I go in and I'm like panicking like they had like this girl like show me around and stuff but I'm really bad with direction anyway and I, even though I had a map like I still find myself getting lost like 50 times that day but everybody was really really friendly there and so I was excited but also terrified because I didn't know anyone and my anxiety was through the roof and that was whenever like my anxiety and depression and all that stuff was really bad and so it was just a huge shock to me. But eventually I got used to it and I ended up finding so many things that I'm good at and that I have interest in that nobody in the small town had ever really known about or cared about but there it was like a whole different thing and so I had like a fashion class and I had like I don't know, there's just so many chances for me to like get into photography like I'd like always just done by myself because nobody cares about it where I used to live. It just made me feel like I actually had a place in the world that I never really thought of before because like I said, like those things didn't exist in the small town that I used to live in. And so it was just like very happy, <laughs> I guess. And I was finding all these people that I could relate to and friends, like more friends than I'd ever had before. 
even though I was still painfully shy, which I'm a shy person, but like imagine how shy I was then. Like speaking in my accent was, ugh. But at the same time that I was like finding, I mean myself, I guess, I don't want to sound pretentious, but at the same time that I was finding all these things out about myself that I'd never known before, I was also confronted with the feelings like my friends back home are starting high school for the first time and they're slowly forgetting about me because out of sight, out of mind, you know? And so I would still try to keep in contact with them, but it was really hard, especially because of the time difference, which was only like three hours, but still, like, it made a difference. But yeah, it was weird not seeing the people that I was so used to seeing every day anymore and just starting a completely new life. Like, not to sound, like, too deep or weird or anything, but it honestly felt like I had died in the small town because, like, communication started cutting off slowly and it, like I just didn't exist there anymore really and I was in this new place so it felt like I just like had a completely different life and even like keeping contact with my family was hard which really bothered me but at the same time like I had so many things to distract myself with so it was sad seeing everyone's life move forward without me and as selfish as it sounds like seeing them be like really happy without me like I thought that they would miss me a little more I guess that sounds so sad <laughs> But I don't mean it like that. It was just, like, strange to watch from a distance. But adjusting to, like, all of the different cultures and all of the different, like, norms for California was also pretty difficult because, I mean, like, I was 13, 14. Like, it was really... I started a completely new high school. Like, it was just, like, a lot to take in. So it did take me a while to get used to it. And also everybody was asking me about myself, <laughs> which is all honestly scary. Like, for example, people always wanted to hear me say things, and my accent was even, like, thicker back then than it is now, just because, like, I had lived there for a while, but, like, everybody would ask me to say things. Like, I remember I was walking across the courtyard with one of my best friends, and he was like, I really want to, like, I really want you to meet these girls. They really want to hear what you sound like, and I was like, okay, <laughs> like, terrified, because, like, I'm bad at meeting new people anyway. And so we and so we walked up to them and they were really, really nice. I was so scared that they would like make fun of the way I talked or make stereotypical jokes about me, which I mean did happen, obviously, because I'm from the South. Like it's gonna happen. I kinda deserve it. <laughs> but no, they're super nice. Everybody thought my accent was cute, which I don't really think it's cute. <laughs> And they would always ask me what it was like at, like, back home. And so I would tell them, and they would just be like, oh my gosh. And, of course, I was confronted with some of the questions, like, do people wear shoes in the South? And, like, just, like, stupid stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, actually, everyone wears shoes. Like, wow, who would have thought? But it wasn't really a problem for me as much, I guess, just because, like, I wasn't a part of that. I'm not, like, a crazy hillbilly, don't worry. And when it comes to school and stuff, I don't understand people that can just go somewhere and be bored and brag about doing nothing. I mean, if you're one of those, it's fine. It's just, like, personally, I want to go and learn. Like, I don't want to be bored, and I like... Like, I really admire intelligence and stuff like that, and so I just love to find stuff out. So I was usually at the top of my class, which kind of shocked me, just because, like, I thought that the education standards would be higher. Which, I mean, they were, but I just enjoyed it. And then as soon as I'd become thoroughly adjusted and made some friends that I would never want to say goodbye to, I had to. Like, there was stuff going on at home and, like, back home and stuff like that, and so I just had to come back. And so saying goodbye to mom was really hard just because, like, that had even, like, thickened our bond that we'd had before because, like, we had gone through all this together. So I ended up having to say goodbye. Like, I remember this is, like, the most emo thing in the world. But I remember, like, the last day I had, like, my headphones in, like, with my phone, and I was listening to The Great Escape, <laughs> and that was, like, whenever I was, like, hugging everyone while I was leaving, and they're like, I'll miss you, like, don't lose contact, and stuff like that, it's so sad. Like, I don't know about you, but music can really, like, make a memory from a long time ago very vivid to me, and I remember I was listening to This Is Gospel by Panic! at the Disco. Side note, I did see Panic! at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, and 21 Pilots while I was out there, which was fantastic. I remember my mom would just pick me up from school that was playing like in her car. I don't know, she just started crying and she was like, I'm gonna miss you. I don't know how I'm gonna like handle it out here without you. Like you've just made things brighter. And it was just like so sad. Like it broke my heart. 
And so every time I listen to This Is Gospel now, it makes me so sad. And I also had this dog while I was out there. He was like my best friend. I just did the clapping. But... No, he was my best friend. And his name was Jackson. He was a little white poodle. And he, like, we just hung out constantly. Like, he was my, like, best buddy. It was before I didn't start school that I'd got him. And so, like, we were really close. And I couldn't afford to, like, ship him back home with me. <laughs> And so I had to say goodbye to him too, and it broke my heart. It was so terrible. And I'm like getting sad just thinking about it. Like this is, this was a terrible idea. What is that? Something weird always happens every time I'm filming a video. And so I got on the plane, went back home. There was like snowstorms and stuff. It was like in early, no, late February, I guess. It was like right before my dad's birthday. My dad had got married while I was gone too. That was... I got back home... And it was just like the weirdest feeling driving through like our little town and seeing like new buildings there and going back to school and seeing like how much everyone had changed. Like I know that like whenever you go to high school ultimately you are going to change a lot but I didn't think it would be that much. I didn't realize that I had changed that much either. It was like the old friends that like I had really loved were different people. And I was coming back there and it was like completely new. Like everyone was hugging me like missing me and stuff like that. And they asked me about my adventures. I'm, like, I did become kind of cool just because I lived in California. Like, people still bring that up. Like, words just can't describe how weird it was. Like, like I said, it was kind of like I had died there whenever I went to California. And so then it was happening again. But it was like I was back to life in this place. And all these things had changed. Everyone had changed. My family had even changed. And my sister was like pregnant <laughs> like I had to come back home I couldn't miss that I mean I obviously got used to it. it was a lot easier to get used to like going to the high school in my like hometown than it was going to California but I don't know like I still feel weird about it sometimes just because like like I said like none of the things that I loved existed here like YouTube and making videos and doing creative things like isn't really a thing like in that hometown and so like I just felt really out of place like even more than I had before and I just had all these memories that nobody else had with me that I could share with. So, I, like, it was just me telling stories and then kind of like, oh, that's cool. But since then, I have gotten, like, a lot closer to people. And my mom has moved, like, back closer to me, but still, like, three hours away. Before she had moved back and stuff, that following summer, I went back out there. And it was just, like, one of the happiest memories that I have of that place is I got back from the airport. She, like, almost didn't recognize me, which I was a little offended about, I'm not gonna lie. And so, we went back to her apartment, and while we were driving there, like, I'd Snapchat and my friends, like, I'm back! And, uh, as soon as we got home, I looked up on, like, the balcony that we had, and one of my friends was, like, just standing there. He's like, everybody else was supposed to be here already, you got back really fast, I guess, because your mom drives fast, but, um, hey! <laughs> and so, they were, like, waiting on me, it was so nice! And so, like, he came inside, and then everybody else showed up, and, like, it was just, like, a big hugging fest, and I missed everyone so much, and it was just so kind that they, like, thought to come to my house to surprise me when I got back. Like, my mom didn't even know. And it, I don't know, it's just one of the happiest memories I have, of, like, being reunited with all my California friends, which I hope happens again soon. I would love to go back. Like, I'm still, like, in touch with the majority of them. So... I would love to go back to California, maybe like for VidCon or something, because I'm a massive fangirl. But no, like this whole experience has changed my life. Like without it, like I'd always wanted to make videos and do stuff like this, like forever pretty much. <laughs> but I just never really had like the confidence in myself and I thought that like it was too out there for me, which it might be, I don't know. But everyone like that I had known before I went to California thought it was just like so weird. Like I'd always try to get friends to like make channels with me and stuff, which is probably a good thing I didn't because I was really weird. But like now like I just have like so much more faith in like creativity and things like that. Like I always thought that I was out of place for being creative and there's just so many people out there that think the same way and so I feel a lot better about it. But yeah, that was one of the most life-changing and eye-opening experiences that I've ever had, which, I mean, I guess you kind of have to see it from my point of view to understand that. But I'm just so happy that I was able to, and I'm so happy that, like, I feel like it's put me on the path that I need to be on, and I'm gonna get out of the South again, don't you worry. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and listening to my little story, 
And if you guys want to hear some more like crazy times that I had in California, then let me know because I was way more ballsy than I am now. So I have a lot of like wild stories to tell you. But please give this video a thumbs up if I maybe just entertained you or if maybe you're moving and you want some insight on what it's like and how it can benefit you, which if you are, I highly suggest that you do something that is really out of your comfort zone because it will make a world of difference. It's something scary that it's probably what you should be doing because being comfortable is just too comfortable, I guess. And leave a comment on maybe if you would want to hear those stories or what you thought about it, or if you've done that before, I would love to hear you guys' stories about, like, if you've moved. Like, even if it's just to a new school, I just love hearing about that and how it benefited you and how it was scary. I just, I would love to know. <laughs> and please subscribe to me if you haven't already because it would make my life. And we can be friends. So, I'll see you in the next video. Literally, I was talking about how redneck that my small town is and I look outside and there's a fucking goat in the road.